Hello, this is R.J. Deacon, reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Mahanoy Area School District v. B.L., Certiorari to United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit, argued April 28, 2021, decided June 23, 2021. Mahanoy Area High School student B.L. failed to make the school's varsity cheerleading squad. While visiting a local convenience store over the weekend, BL posted two images on Snapchat, a social media application for smartphones that allows users to share temporary images with selected friends. BL's posts expressed frustration with the school and the school's cheerleading squad, and one contained vulgar language and gestures. When school officials learned of the posts, they suspended BL from the junior varsity cheerleading squad for the upcoming year. After unsuccessfully seeking to reverse that punishment, B.L. and her parents sought relief in federal court, arguing inter alia that punishing B.L. for her speech violated the First Amendment. The district court granted an injunction ordering the school to reinstate B.L. to the cheerleading team, relying on Tinker v. Des Moines. To grant B.L.'s subsequent motion for summary judgment, the district court found that B.L.'s punishment violated the First Amendment because her Snapchat post had not caused substantial disruption at the school. The Third Circuit affirmed the judgment, but the panel majority reasoned that Tinker did not apply because schools had no special license to regulate student speech occurring off campus. The Supreme Court held, decision is affirmed, and Justice Breyer delivered the opinion of the court. While public schools may have a special interest in regulating some off-campus student speech, the special interests offered by the school are not sufficient to overcome BL's interest in free expression in this case. In Tinker, we indicated that schools have a special interest in regulating on-campus student speech that material dis materially disrupts classwork or involves substantial disorder or invasion of the rights of others. The special characteristics that gives schools additional license to regulate student speech do not always disappear when that speech takes place off campus. Circumstances that may implicate a school's regulatory interests include serious or severe bullying or harassment targeting particular individuals, threats aimed at teachers or other students, the failure to follow the rules concerning lessons, the writing of papers, the use of computers, or participation in other online school activities, and breaches of the school's security devices. But three features of off-campus speech often even if not always, distinguish schools' efforts to regulate off-campus speech. First, a school will rarely stand in loco parentis when a student speaks off-campus. Second, from the student speaker's perspective, regulations of off-campus speech, when coupled with regulations of on-campus speech, include all the speech a student utters during the full 24-hour day. That means courts must be more skeptical of a school's efforts to regulate off-campus speech, for doing so may mean that the student cannot engage in that kind of speech at all. Third, the school itself has an interest in protecting a student's unpopular expression, especially where the expression takes place off campus, because America's public schools are the nurseries of democracy. Taken together, these three features of much off-campus speech mean that the leeway the First Amendment grants to schools in light of their special characteristics is diminished. The school violated BL's First Amendment rights when it suspended her from the Junior Varsity Cheerleading Squad. BL's posts are entitled to First Amendment protection. The statements made in BL's Snapchat reflect criticism of the rules of a community of which BL forms a part, and BL's message did not involve features that would place it outside the First Amendment's ordinary protection. The circumstances of BL's speech diminish the school's interest in regulation. BL's posts appeared outside of school hours from a location outside of the school. She did not identify the school in her posts or target any member of the school community with vulgar or abusive language. BL also transmitted her speech through a personal cell phone to an audience consisting of her private circle of Snapchat friends. The school's interest in teaching good manners and consequently in punishing the use of vulgar language aimed at part of the school community is weakened considerably by the fact that BL spoke outside the school on her own time.
BL spoke under circumstances where the school did not stand in loco parentis. And the vulgarity in BL's posts encompassed a message of criticism. In addition, the school has presented no evidence of any general effort to prevent students from using vulgarity outside the classroom. The school's interest in preventing disruption is not supported by the record, which shows that discussion of the matter took at most five to ten minutes of an algebra class for just a couple of days, and that some members of the cheerleading team were upset about the content of BL's Snapchats. This alone does not satisfy Tinker's demanding standards. Likewise, there is little to suggest a substantial interference in or disruption of the school's efforts to maintain cohesion on the school cheerleading squad. The decision below is affirmed. Justice Breyer delivered the opinion of the court, in which Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Alito, Sotomayor, Kagan, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett joined. Justice Alito filed a concurring opinion, in which Justice Gorsuch joined. Justice Thomas filed a dissenting opinion. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get a hold of the podcast, I can be reached at rhodesscholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and the number 80. Uh, if you'd like to support me or the podcast, you can find a PayPal link in the show notes. Find me on Patreon or contact me at the email I just gave.